Welcome to quantum mechanics, a powerful framework for understanding the universe. Hi everybody, welcome back. Today we're going to start chapter three, measurement, uncertainty, time evolution, and the harmonic oscillator. And this has, this material in this chapter has some of those fascinating aspects of quantum mechanics that uh, are hard to believe. Anyway, let's start out by talking about measurement in quantum mechanics. We begin by recalling a couple of facts that uh, we mentioned before, but it's worth stating them again. So, facts, postulates. The state of a physical system is described by a normalized ket in the Hilbert space script H. Okay, now every measurable physical quantity of a physical system or observable, in quotes, is described by a self adjoint operator A acting on the Hilbert space H. Okay, this is where quantum mechanics really differs from classical mechanics. Now we want to talk about with this setup the state space. Hilbert space and an observable um, described by a self adjoint operator on that Hilbert space. We want to talk about measuring A, the observable. And this, the rules for this co co often collectively go by the name of the Born rule. And I've put the original paper here just for completeness. I don't think you're really going to need to look at it. But anyway, it's nice to always have the original references so you can go back. All right, so hit rule number one, the outcome of a measurement. The only possible outcome of a measurement of a physical observable is an eigenvalue of A. Okay. Suppose you want to measure the physical observable A, what are you going to get? It's only going to be an eigenvalue. Okay, that's bizarre, but it's the way nature works. Okay, the probability, so eigenvalues are the outcome of measurement. What is the probability? for measuring a particular eigenvalue, or what is the probability of a particular outcome of a measurement? Okay, suppose the system is in the state psi, important, and the observable A is measured. Then the eigenvalue of A, we'll call it lambda, occurs with a given probability. And this is a notation we use, the probability for measuring lambda in the state psi. And look what it is. It's the expectation value of this operator P lambda, which is the orthogonal projection onto the subspace spanned by the eigenvectors corresponding to A. Now that sounds like it's going to be difficult and abstract, but based on what we've already done, this is going to be fairly easy, at least in the situations we look at, to find P lambda. Okay, and this also has this expression. So you should verify to yourselves this last equality between these two expressions. Okay, now I want to emphasize this notion of expectation value. I said it earlier. Actually, we introduced it in the last chapter. But we have a bra on the left, a ket, the same ket, the corresponding ket on the right, and an, an operator in between. And that's the expectation value of that operator in the state psi. Okay. So... Once we make the measurement, we are going to alter the state. It's not going to be 
can't sigh anymore, necessarily, except in a certain special case, which we'll, we'll get to that next. So if the measurement of A on the system that is in the state ket psi gives the outcome lambda, an eigenvalue, then the state after measurement is given by this expression. So it's this orthogonal projection onto the eigenspace corresponding to lambda acting on ket psi and normalized in this way. Now, remember, we normalize everything. OK, so in summary, the measurement of an observable yields an eigenvalue. An observable is a self-adjoint operator. If we know the state before the measurement, we can calculate the probability of obtaining a particular eigenvalue as a result of measurement of that observable on that state. However, the measurement changes the state. But we can calculate that state after the measurement, provided we knew the state in which the measurement is made and the outcome of the measurement. All right, that, th that pretty succinctly explains quantum measurement, but I want to go into it, I want to consider two examples. I'll consider one in this lecture and then I'll come back in the next lecture and consider uh, a, different, a, a different example which has a few different wrinkles. So, so let lambda i and ket e i denote eigenvalues and normalized eigenvectors of a self-adjoint operator A defined on a finite dimensional Hilbert space. That's the setup. Now, we're going to suppose there are no degeneracies. So, corresponding to each eigenvalue, we have one eigenvector. Uh, we have a complete set of eigenvalues, distinct, uh, you can say this in a variety of ways, distinct eigenvalues equal to the the number equal to the dimension of the space. Okay, so I'm looking at finite dimensions to make things simpler at this stage. Okay, so the projection operator onto the subspace corresponding to the eigenvalue lambda i is given by this ket bra combination. We have already considered projection operators in this form in chapter, at the end of chapter 1 on Dirac notation, and you probably should go back and revise that. Um, but you're going to get a lot of practice in this chapter. Okay. Also, we can represent A in spectral form. We had this result at the end of the chapter, chapter one. So go back and look at that. I said we're going to use that quite a bit, and here's where we really start using it. Okay, so this is a setup. We have a um, finite dimensional complex center product space, n dimensions, no degeneracies, so n eigenvectors, n distinct eigenvalues. Okay, so let's consider an arbitrary state. Well, the cat EIs are an basis, an eigenbasis for this Hilbert space. And so psi can be written as a linear combination of the basis vectors. Okay, that's the general psi. Now suppose A is measured in the state psi. So we can ask what is the probability of measuring lambda, lambda i. Well, that's a general notation, but 
Remember, it's given by this expectation value. The state, psi, so we have bra on the left, cat on the right, and the orthogonal projection operator in the middle. And we have the magnitude, the answer is the magnitude of AI squared. Now this is interesting because we've already seen something like it. If you go back to the square well, look at equations 2.64 and 2.67, and you should see that that's a very um, specific form of this very general form. Okay, if we measure lambda i, then after the measurement, what is the state? Well, according to the formula we just gave, it's the proje orthogonal projection operator acting on the state psi and normalized. Okay, so this is the or orthogonal projection operator corresponding to the eigenvalue of lambda i. We let it act on the state. And look, we get a complex number times the state corresponding to the eigenvalue that was measured. Okay, so actually this is the same as the state EI because this complex number is just a complex number of unit magnitude and um, those do not affect the state in terms of measurement. I said that kind of clumsily. Think about, think about that a little bit. We've had this statement a few times that all states, states are the same up to a, um, a phase factor or a complex, a multiple by a complex number that is magnitude one. And that's what I'm seeing right here. Now, look at this expression here. If we look at the probability for measuring lambda i in the state and sum over i, we get one. So that means the sum of the probabilities is one, which is what we would expect. We're going to measure something. And normalization came into play there. All right, now this is a very interesting result here. Suppose the state in which we're going to make the measurement is an eigenstate, cat e n. So what is the probability of measuring lambda e n? One, do the calculation. It's not a statement on my part, it's just do the calculation. Well, what would be the probability then of measuring lambda m for m not equal to n in the state e sub n, cat e sub n, which is the eigenstate corresponding to lambda n? It better be zero because the probability is one for measuring the other. And you can do the calculation and that's what you're going to come up with. So do these calculations, they're pretty simple. So in other words, if we measure A in an eigenstate of A, the outcome of the measurement is always the eigenvalue corresponding to that eigenstate. Okay, so let's look at some other statistical quantities associated with uh, measurement and, and observables. Okay, the expectation value, I talked a bit about this earlier, of A in the state psi, I'm not sure I emphasize that made that statement enough in the previous chapter when we introduced expectation values but we talk about expectation value or expected value of the observable a in the state psi so we denote this e sub psi of a expectation value of a in the state psi and it's just this expression that we've already seen so it's the predicted mean value of the measurement of A. And here's some more good calculations for you to do. 
you can write the expectation value of A in the state psi in terms of the probability of measuring lambda i weighted by lambda i. Okay, now we have another quantity that is going to be very important when we look at uncertainties. And that is the, the, the dispersion of an operator, A, self-adjoint operator, in the state psi. And we call that uppercase delta sub psi of A, dispersion, delta dispersion. Okay, and it has a nice expression here. And this is the standard deviation, or the, squ or the square root um, of the variance. And we saw the variance earlier. It's a measure of the spread about the mean, the expectation value of A. And this is going to be a very important quantity later on. So it's important to keep in mind that the expectation value of the operator and the dispersion of the operator, in general, depends on the state in which the measurement is made, ket psi. Okay, that's a good place to stop for today. And I'll come back next time, look at another example that is, has a bit more detail in it. Okay, see you next time. Bye.